Hi, my name is Zoe, and I'm here with um, a person. I'm just a person. Yeah. It's a very awesome person, though. Are you sure? Yeah, the most awesome. I think Freddie and Buddy wanted the podcast. Well, they didn't see the movie, so... <laughs> they can't. Uh, no spoilers for them. No spoilers. So, yeah, we're gonna talk about Solo. Are you having no spoilers? No, we're talking about the do- having no spoilers for the dogs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm beast. Yeah. My spoiler was the Funko Pop ruined. I was spoiled about a very big moment in the movie because people on the internet don't know how to keep things under, you know, or read more, or tag it so I can blacklist it. So, that's what, what you get spoiled? All right, before I don't before I want to say it, obviously there's going to be spoilers for Solo here. Um, well, first <laughs> before we start talking about spoilers, let's give a spoiler-free review. So, if anyone <laughs> that's difficult hasn't okay. seen it, they can listen to this, and then before we talk about spoilers, they can shut it off. Okay. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> um, it, uh, it was great. There was a lot of action <laughs> compared to, I guess, other Star Wars movies, I think. Uh, I can't give spoiler. For, I'm trying so hard, Zoe. Help. My spoiler free review is that it's very funny but not like like none of the humor seemed overdone. It fit very well. Um, I think it did paid good respect to Han Solo's character. Um, yeah. Lando's uh, Donald Glover's Lando was incredible and Alden Ehrenreich's Han Solo very much pleasantly surprised me. He was an awesome Han. Did I call him Lando? I think I called him Lando. He was an awesome yeah. Han. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it had a lot of interesting characters and stories, and it goes in directions you don't really expect, and it's just a really fun movie, so I would highly recommend it. Yeah. (laughs) It's, uh, yeah, for people who think, like, oh, these, these characters will never be my Han Solo or my Lando, well, they're, but they, they play it really well, um... I was scared that, you know, I would go in and see Han and not know that's, or, like, keep forgetting that's Han. So, um, but I didn't do that. That was pretty good. Yeah, I was... Good faces. Yeah, I was, like, I was kind of concerned about, like, you know, because even after this movie, Harrison Ford's still going to be Han to me, but Alden Ehrenreich played an amazing Han, and that was really cool. Um, I think what I liked about both um, Alden and Donald Glover's performances was that they weren't a caricature of those characters. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, Alden Ehrenreich wasn't playing Harrison Ford. He was playing Han Solo. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. Donald Glover wasn't playing Billy Dee Williams. He was playing Lando. And I think that's Mm -hmm. what worked. I think that worked really well. Yeah, definitely. And Donald Glover is amazing as Lando. (laughs) Yeah, he looked really good in the outfits, too. Like, really good. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> and... What else was I going to say? Uh, Chewie is awesome in this movie, by the way. If you like Chewie, you'll love this movie. Even if you, like, for s- somehow hate everything in this movie, you're going to love Chewie. Um, L3 and Kira were both very awesome characters. Um... What else can I say without spoiling it? Um, it had a very good feel. It had a feel that worked well for Star Wars, and it had a feel that worked well for Han Solo. Oh no, Lizzie. Where'd you go? Oh, uh, this is a mess. Hi. It's still recording. We're good. Hello? Lizzie. 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 Sorry. <laughs> you um, good? Stupid phone. I just completely unplugged it. <laughs> oh, that's great. 
Uh, it's still recording. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Wait, Dad, would you like to give a spoiler-free review on Solo? I think I said that right. My spoiler-free review? Hashtag not my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I actually kind of thought of that before. That's, that, you know, they're with Voss. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, he's gone. Oh, okay. That was all you had to say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dryden Voss. That guy was pretty cool. He was great. I saw a concept art where he was originally a Lissot. Ooh. Um, I would have. Uh-huh, on one but, hand, I would have loved that because Rebels. On the other hand, I still don't want to see a Vasat in real life. Yeah. <laughs> like I, Zeb is a purple fluffy kitty cat, and I want to keep that in my mind. I don't want anything to ruin that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that would be horrible. It's okay though. They didn't do that. Yeah. Um. That's. I think that's. That's all I can say about. Spoilers, I think. Go watch Solo, basically. Yeah, it's really good. It's a fun so movie. So I want people that are like at school where like I normally talk stars with them after a movie comes out, but they're like, "Oh, I didn't go see Solo." I'm like, but Why? You have to. It's so good. It was um, so really good. <laughs> I went with my two uncles. Um, well, my dad's friends, but like none of my whole life. Anyway, so I went with them, and they're not giant. Star Wars nerds. My uncle Jesse is a Star Trek person, but <laughs> but he really enjoyed the movie. He thought it was really fun, and that the um, casting was really was done really well. Um, so yeah, Star Trek fans, go see Star Wars. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it was good. It. Um, but. It was like like it was a different movie than we'd ever seen in Star Wars before, I think. But it still it still fit really well and it felt a lot like Star Wars. So Yeah. Alright, we're gonna talk spoilers now? Yeah, spoilers please. Alright. So yeah, if you didn't see the movie, go turn this off and order your tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So now spoilers. Do you wanna know the thing I was spoiled on? Very what? mad I was spoiled on it. What? I I was spoiled on uh, Maul. Mm. Which is like the worst thing to be spoiled about. Like, did you just know he was going to be in yeah, it? Yeah, like, I saw people saying that he was in it. Oh. I was so mad. Well, because at first I was like, nah, that's not true. And then people kept saying it. And, like, I kept trying to, like, not read it, but, like, brain doesn't work like that. It sees words, it reads them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't bad. spoiled for anything. Okay. I did not go into the internets. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, spo- we should um, do it in order. In order? Oh, God, I can't do that. I I have have seen it. Okay. Huh? You've seen it twice, right? Yeah. Okay. I got to see it at a drive in theater because it was a troop on Sunday. Mm hmm. And it was a drive in theater, and that was really cool. (laughs) See a movie at a. Everyone should try to see a movie at a drive in theater at some point because they're really neat. And also, they had french fries. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Lizzie. Lizzie, don't die. Uh, huh? You died. I did. You died again. Die. You died again. At, oh my. Oh no. Lizzie. Lizzie. So I. You keep dying. I'm not dying. Alright. I'm so, not dying. Okay. What were you going to say? <laughs> Have you read the um, Chewbacca and the Tuca Cat um, book? I can't remember what it's called. I have not. It's 
uh, so far my dad is um, listening to the audiobook with us and uh, there is like one part where Chewie's in a bar and he orders uh, apparently uh, Nerf Nuggets. I don't know if that <laughs> French fries and Nerf Nuggets. But Han Solo was saying that it tastes awful. So I was like, oh, okay. Sad. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so the beginning. So how many times have you seen it? Three times? Trace. Trace. That's three. Yeah. I know that. I'm smart. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> Set. It's Korean. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so the beginning is where they show, like, Han running away from... I guess he was making a deal with someone. And he stole... Yeah, it didn't go well because he stole it. I love he did it. Are we going to go through every moment in the movie? Because that could take a while. Um, it's, <laughs> I mean, if it does take a while, we could do half the movie this episode, half, um, half the movie next episode. That takes even longer, though. Yeah, but it's cool, and we have nothing else to talk about. That's, um, that's... <laughs> you have to do that here? It's unwrapping Star Wars stuff, so it's podcast. <laughs> of if, course. If my teenage daughter didn't take the scissors, I would easily be able to cut it. Um, yeah. Don't you? Yeah, two, you teen- two teenage daughters. daughters so. <laughs> if my older Star Wars Geek Girl flavored... Star Wars Geek Girl flavored? I don't know what this is. Flavored? <laughs> um, <laughs> I should make cupcakes or candy that's Star Wars Geek Girl flavored. Ew. <laughs> 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 or you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> one can taste like darkness and one can taste oh like light. Oh my goodness. Ooh, ooh, okay. Uh, it's the thing he unwrapped very loudly was a Garrison Corita, <laughs> which is our Garrison license plate thing. Yes. Is that gonna go, it's gonna go to the, oh, or the shelf. It's gonna go to the corner. <laughs> Go the, let's go get on the Millennium Falcon, the blue one, in the driveway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a um, blue one. Which, by the way, Karita was mentioned in the movie, and every other Karita person I know, which is like pretty much everyone around here, we all lost our minds. <laughs> <laughs> Highlight of the movie was mentioning Karita, because that's the best garrison. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I love well, that. Uh, what? <laughs> what? I don't know. You scared me. Garrison Corita. If you live in Pennsylvania, oh, well, in eastern Pennsylvania, because we split recently. If you live in eastern Pennsylvania, you should join Garrison Corita, because we're awesome. <laughs> Just saying. I cannot, I cannot do that. No, you can't. So right. sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Oh, beginning of the movie. Um, so he runs from the people and goes into the sewer thingies? I don't know what they're called. Yeah. Blade pro- they're like catacombs or something. He lives there, I think. What? He and Kira do. Yeah. What? Yeah. How about when they were on that mud planet and you were watching the movie while you were getting rained on? Oh yeah, that was 4D at the drive-in. <laughs> we're not there yet, though. Oh, I'm sorry. How about when the guy from Fr- the monkey from Friends got shot and died? What? Oh no, that's me. <laughs> no, that was the guy who played Monica's boyfriend. Did the voice? Was that John Favreau, the, the voice for the monkey? Yeah. Not you, not the, the Ardinian. Not the, yeah, but not the. You were thinking of. I was thinking Ross's of Ross's friend. pet monkey. No, he wasn't in the movie. Okay. What? The Ardinian was voiced by John Favreau. I think it was. I think. What was his name? Grio. Re, 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 Rio. I thought it was. I thought it was a G. Lizzie, what is it? Is it Grio or Rio? What? 
the Ardinian's name? I think it's Rio. Rio? Rio, oh, and then his last name is a G, I think. I gotta look it up now. Um... I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. Okay. What are, where were we at the beginning? And he runs from the people. And it's real? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I don't... I did was so uncomfortable with the whole Lady Proxima. Proxima? Proxima. Oh, yeah. That was I did love when he had the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Click, because that's just, that's one thing I loved about this movie. It was so Han Solo, because Han Solo too often gets like misread as this like suave, cool guy that always knows what he's doing. But if you really watch the original trilogy, he never knows what's going on. He's just he just bluffs his way out of everything and makes stupid decision after stupid decision until he gets lucky. And that's part of for me at least. That's part of his charm. <laughs> and he's also, yeah. like, he's, like, convinced. He's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm a cool, tough guy. I don't have a heart, but he totally does. So I think, and the movie captured that really well, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing with Kira, I, would, I wasn't really expecting that. What thing? Um, like, his relationship with Kira. Oh. I, like, kind of expected it. I was, like, you know. I thought they were gonna, like, I didn't know that he was gonna know her from, like, way back. Well, I figured he had to, because in the one, like, TV spot or trailer or whatever, she was, like, you look good, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I figured they knew each other. I figured she was just saying that for a job. Like, you look good for this job. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Whoops. My notes, where they go. There they are. Okay. <laughs> and then... Um, then they run away. They run away. Um, Han shows off his amazing driving skills. Gets stuck in an alley, does kind get of. Stuck. Um, Kira gets captured. You know, I just have so many thoughts. Of you know another thing that I think was cool? Because hmm. one thing that, in my opinion... In some, like, in some ways, the new movies are kind of lacking a little bit. Is like, that good old, like, George Lucas way of world building. I mean, he didn't invent it, but he used it a lot. Where he'd just, like, name drop random things. And they meant nothing to the viewer, but it just made the world seem more natural. Because sometimes when you're, like, watching a show, or reading a book, or watching a movie, and someone's like, oh, I'm going to name drop this thing, and then explain it. It just feels, it sometimes feels a little unnatural. But in Star Wars, in the original trilogy especially, they just, like, name something. Like, you know, they name, and now we have more context for it, but back in the day, before I was born, <laughs> um, they'd just be like, oh, the Clone Wars, the Kessel Run, this, this. And, like, that meant nothing to the viewer, but it made the world feel more natural because it just kind of flowed in the conversation. Because mm-hmm. that's how people talk in real life. Like, yeah. you're talking to someone... And you're like, oh, and then, um, like, then you're like, oh, George Washington, who was the first president of the United States, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> you don't say that. You don't give historical context. You just mention it, and the, every, you just assume everyone knows, because it's common knowledge. And they did that a lot in Star Wars. And they did that a lot in Solo, which was something that the newer movies don't seem to be doing as much, but they did that in Solo, like, with the, like, Ardinian Minoc roast that he mentioned. Like, they just kind of mentioned stuff. Oh, I loved that. I want to I wanna go. <laughs> I don't know. I, when he was... Okay, I'm getting... That was a long-winded off. explanation. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> explaining all this, saying that's not used in real life when you just did it right now, but it's okay. Well, I didn't name <laughs> up something. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just messing with you. Oh, I, I was messing with my dad. I mess with everyone. 
messing with my dad about the Imperial and saying that he was heckin' creative with names. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And he should have children and they'll all have cool names. (laughs) I'm weird, but... The first child's name first, the second child's name second. (laughs) (laughs) No, first solo, because that's the only child. Ah, and then duo. And then trio. Mm Mm-hmm. Gotcha. There you go. Um, so they do that, and then immediately, like, they're saying, we'll get you in the air, and then all of a sudden he's in war on the ground, and people are getting blown up. Yeah, that was... Why? Wow, motorcycle. I know, people are jerk faces. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> that was, um... That was cool, the mud. That was I liked how that was cut, too. That was a well... That was a good transition yeah. between scenes. This movie was shot and edited really well, in my opinion. Ron Howard. Ron... Yeah. Ron Howard. Um, yeah. That was, that was a good way to introduce Beckett and Val and Rio. I, I thought it, at the first time I watched it... I'll be honest, I didn't understand what was going on when they were making fun of Beckett, like in the beginning, for being captain. Um, I just thought he didn't want to take responsibility and he was actually part of the Imperial. Well, I thought they kind of wanted you to think, and then you figured right. it out with Han. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> that was, I was confuzzled. Um... I liked when he was the Ardenian was pulling up his pants and, while he was in the uniform. It was really cute. He's adorable. Zoe, did you die? No, I'm right here. Okay. <laughs> and so there was the mud, and then they met Chewie. Oh, that was such a good. I loved how they introduced Chewie. Yeah. That was that was really cool, um, and I, I'm gonna go on another tangent again. Do you mind or should I shut up? I no no, it's a podcast. Do whatever you want. I know, but I feel like I talk too much. No, no do it. Okay. All right, um, I like that Chewie isn't bound to Han by a life debt anymore, because like from what I understand in the old EU, it was like Han saved Chewie's life, so now Chewie is like obligated by Wookiee culture to follow him around. And that never, like, gelled with me, I guess. Gelled, is that a word that people do? I don't know. <laughs> that never worked with me. Because, like, I... Maybe it's because I'm sappy. But I like the idea that Han and Chewie genuine, genuinely, like, love each other. And, like, like working together and living together and being best buddies. <laughs> so, like, this idea that Han, Chewie is just hangs out with Han just because he has to. I didn't really like that, so I like that it was like, now it's like Chewie chooses to be with Han, if that makes sense. Right, but he also still saved his life. Well, yeah, he did still save his life, but there wasn't like any kind of life debt thing. With the secret battle of pretend. Secret battle of pretend. <laughs> I love that he was able to talk, I think it's Shriwook? Shriwook, yeah. Shriwook. Shri- I don't know. I don't know. I think it's Shriwook because that's Shri-wook. what they were saying. There, there was an audio. In Wookie, they pronounce Wookie. it like. I don't know. I can't do a Wookie impression. Um, so that was funny. And, he was, and Chewie was so confused. I thought that was adorable. Um, but then that reminded me of the Sabine book. I don't. I guess Sabine isn't able to actually speak. Well, she. From what I remember of that Sabine book, which I don't have it on hand right now, she didn't say that humans. From what I remember, you might you might be right. No, right. She didn't but say that I humans thought... can't speak Wookiee. She just said after a while it hurts her throat. Yeah. So. I mean, I can't speak Wookiee. <laughs> I can't do a lot of things. I can't speak Spanish because I can't roll my R's. I can't do that either. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> um. 
Oh, I loved... So, that whole secret battle of pretend, but, like, before that, when they were actually fighting, and Han was just going at him and pulling his hair and, like, he biting... Him. He bit him! That and probably I was like, tasted yeah. so gross. It's a mix of, like, mud. Dirty, dirty hair, mud, and, like, gross water. And, like, if you don't, like... You have dogs, too. Like, you know, if you don't wash a dog in a while, they smell a little bit. Like, not, like, really gross, but, like, if you don't wash a dog in, like, a month or so, it just, they start to smell. Like, I can't (laughs) imagine Chewie was getting too many showers. (laughs) So if he smells like a dog, then, ew. (laughs) He had to. He did get a shower, though. Yeah, oh. (laughs) Together. <laughs> Together, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> oh. And then they... And then, oh, I loved when he came out. And uh, they came out of the shower. And then, you Jimmy know, Han was so looking fluffy. great. And he was so fluffy. He looked so fluffy. He was so fluffy and, like, so much hair. I want to fall asleep <laughs> curled up in a Wookiee's lap. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I think of Chewie's hair. And I think of my dad. And his hair. (laughs) And so, like... Because my dad just came out of the shower uh, a while ago. And, like, his hair was just, like, soaking wet. But I know later it's just going to be super fluffy. (laughs) (laughs) Ugh, it's going to be great. (laughs) Um, I really like Val. Val was awesome. Yeah, she... She was very sassy. She was great. I want to maybe see more of her. And I don't... I mean, stuff like maybe before. Solo. Cause obviously. Um, yep. She was cool. Yeah. And um, Safi wants to do an Enfy's Nest costume. I want to do that too. <laughs> Safi, uh, ever since like the first trailer when we saw Enfy's Nest, Safi's been thinking about it. And now this movie like confirmed it for her. Hmm. Yeah, I I want to do it, but and I told my dad, and he's like, "No, you still gotta get your epilogue Sabine done, and you gotta." I still and you won't work. <laughs> Sabine's do- to get done. Plus, I want to do an animated tie, so. Hmm. Suffer. <laughs> the haircut, like season three Sabine, though, we're gonna order purple hair dye. So. Yay! It'll be great. Or not season three. Um, epilogue Sabine. Not, yeah, it's not, like wait. It's never even long enough to be season three. It hasn't been that long since like last year. <laughs> I cut uh, my hair short in like seventh or eighth grade, and I haven't gone back since. <laughs> <laughs> so great. I was thinking of going back to long hair because um, since my mom's gonna be busy, although like my hair won't grow that fast, but my mom will be busy with like school so she won't be able to costume as Ray for events so I might have to do that but who knows oh well you got a wig no I don't like wigs okay I would rather die you could put is it like she does oh wait she does the Ray from the end of Force Awakens doesn't she yeah cause I was gonna say you could do the head wrap thing but that Ray, that version of Ray doesn't have that. You know, in the beginning of Force Awakens, when she has the stuff on her face and the goggles. Oh, yeah, no, but, I can't. Yeah, it's mostly it's... for like saber guilt shows, kind of. Oh yeah. I want to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I love how my notes went from Val is awesome. Then next, Val is dead. And <laughs> <you>. <laughs> and <laughs> Everyone's dead. Uh, Val no, was mission. great. That mission didn't go. Although I did like that mission because it kind of reminded me of like an old western movie, like the train raids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was and it was, but it was still Star Wars. That was really cool. I like that. Yeah. Um. Uh, Enfys Nest was super cool. She's awesome. I loved her like fans and stuff when she was fighting um, Beckett. Her I what? Did, when her, like, fan things she had, like, oh, on her yeah, arms. Yeah. yeah. When she was fighting Beckett. My dad said they were made of Mandalorian armor. Sounds Or, like, awesome. the same material. Yeah. 
I it's do good. have one criticism of that scene, though, <laughs> and it's when Beckett, when Enfys Nest shows up and Beckett says, damn it, now we're going to hear the end of this. That mm-hmm. sa- that line just seemed delivered kind of weirdly to me. And, like, every time I see it, I still it still feels weird. Like, the line, there's nothing wrong with the line, I just think the way he said it sounded odd, if that makes sense. You know what I'm talking uh, I about? Guess they- I guess I get I see that now, but like before I was like, uh, oh, that's true, except ha, she's dead. Like <laughs> Rao rude. Like I got the line and I think it was I think it was a good line, like I'm not saying they should have gotten rid of it. I just think that Woody Harrelson maybe his delivery could have been better, I guess. But it was still good. I mean it wasn't I you know, it wasn't like awful. I think that's I don't know. It sounded like a my little favorite odd quote to me. From him. Yeah, it was pretty great. <laughs> that's pretty much Anytime my mom says something, my dad's like, that's not gonna happen. Don't worry about it. And then it does. It's, I think that's pretty much, like, that's pretty much what my, how my dad feels when my mom turns out to be right about something. Oh, my dad and mom, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it works. <laughs> um, moms are always right. Oh, I hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> but what would we do without them? They keep uh. the house running. I, oh goodness, I would be dead. <laughs> I wouldn't eat, like, I wouldn't have food. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was fine stuff, too. Do you ever notice that? You're like, oh, I lost this cord, and you look for it, like, an hour, and then you're like, mom, help me, and she finds it in, like, 30 seconds. Yeah, but my problem is, like, I'll say that, and she's like, really, you can't find it. If I find it, you're grounded. I That's, was like, oh, no, I will, fi- I will find it. <laughs> my mom says that, too. She's like, if I find it, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. Where else? I did, I love Rio. Rio was so oh, fun. Rio was so good. Do you know who I missed in this movie, though? Who? Therm Scissor Punch. Therm Scissor Punch? You know, he was, like, on the cards and stuff. The little dude with the scissor punch hands. Nope. They were not little, they were big. Oh. Okay. I've heard of him, but I, I don't know if I saw him. He was in the marketing, and then he wasn't in the movie. It was sad. Oh. R.I.P. Oh, Rio. But- R- R.I.P. Rio. He was so adorable. He was great. And, man. Oh, I, I thought he would be fun. He was a great little dude. We had fun while we lasted. And we learned that he likes girls with sharp teeth. <laughs> nice girls with sharp teeth. Nice girls with sharp teeth, yeah. <laughs> Um, Uh, then they then Han drops all the cargo and Becca gets mad although I was thinking like Becca got mad at him for dropping the cargo but like cause the like Enfys' cables she had three cables on it and they broke all of them so like I mean, it was... Yeah, I guess so. But and, like, so I feel like Han's cable, th- those probably would have broken, too. But there's always a possibility. <laughs> yeah, but if they had broken, what if Chewie and Becca hadn't been holding onto the line? And they went boom. I don't know. We'll never know now. Yeah. But they're safe. <laughs> Do you know one thing I also liked about... I just, I'm sorry. Too many tangents. I'm sorry. But no, go. I also like that, with the, like a couple exceptions, they never did anything where it's like, are Han and Chewie going to make it out alive? Because like, the answer's like, yeah. But like... Because I, I don't know. if They like they kind of did it in like the Kessel Run, but like not really. But like the, you know what I mean? Like It was never yeah. like they're in a situation like the suspense is whether or not Han and Chewie's going to make it out. Because, like, you yeah. know they are. It would be pointless <laughs> if we'd be like, are they going to survive? It's like, yeah, they are. Just You might as well skip this scene because we know they're going to be okay. 
it, the suspense was more like how they were gonna get out or like what was gonna yeah. happen with the other characters. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like is yeah. Lando gonna That's die? It's like, no, he's not. We know this, okay? <laughs> Maybe he has a twin brother named Lando. Lando and Panda. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm imagining a panda stuff with a cape. <laughs> That's what I thought of too. <laughs> panda Calrissian. <laughs> with cape. With cape. Many capes. Capes are the most important. I want Lando's capes. Capes to come back into fashion so I can wear capes. I want Lando capes. I, like, at I do the not. End, his shirt cape. at the end of the movie is so, like, it's so ugly. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> like I look at it, it's the tackiest thing, and I adore it so much. <laughs> uh, I love his fashion style. Lando is incredible. I want, I really want, my ideal new anthology movie after seeing this movie would be a Lando movie directed by, oh god, I'm gonna butcher, butcher. <laughs> 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 I'm tired. I'm gonna butcher this name, but uh, the Taika Waititi or something like that. Is that how you say it? The director of Thor Ragnarok. Um, I but don't like, know. wouldn't did you see Thor Ragnarok? Yeah. Wouldn't he be great for a Lando movie? Who? The director of that movie. I I don't know. Like, I don't know. You text me. <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean, though? Uh, nope. You, like, take the Thor Ragnarok style, like that, the comedy and coloring and lighting and everything oh. in that movie, and apply it to a Lando movie. Oh, okay. I thought you said the director as Lando. I was like, wait. No, no. What? No, no, no. Him directing <laughs> a Lando movie. Yeah, okay, yeah. That would be cool. I'd much rather Ron Howard do it, but, yeah. They'll team up. Team up. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see more. A more diverse. More, I want to see more diversity in Star Wars behind the camera. I think. Hmm. So I think. I go. I really don't think I'm saying that right. You, <laughs> your dad's probably gonna make fun of me. Um, <laughs> take a, probably. Wait, TT. I don't know. Um, I think he would be. His style of directing would be awesome for a Lando movie. Because what he did with Thor Ragnarok made me like Thor when before I'd been kind of indifferent to him. Mm-hmm. So, but after Thor Ragnarok, I loved Thor. So I think... I already love Lando, so who knows what he'll do for Lando if he directs the movie. <laughs> Lando's so great. He's... So charming, <laughs> in I a know. way. It's... Like... Oh, goodness... <laughs> Uh, it's weird, he's, but it's, like, a good weird. He's so great. He's just... <laughs> he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Donald Glover really nailed that part. Honestly. He was a great Lando. Yeah, he's, like... You know him as... Do you know him as Childish Gambino? Yeah. As well? Yeah, so I've only seen that one video that he's oh, done. you've only seen the one? No. Watch, well, yes, sorry. You should watch more, because he's really good. He's talented. Talented. Very talented. Yeah. Like, the music isn't my style. Like, the style that I listen to. You don't listen to rap? It, no. Oh, I, I, I do. <laughs> I listen to pretty much everything. <laughs> sorry, what were you saying? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess, like, it's just not my style, and, um, like, the lyrics are, uh, like, you know, the whole video and everything is great, so I listen to it from time to time, but I don't know if I would listen to his other stuff. I probably will, yeah. but... Like, This Is America, that song is, like, like, I just kind of listen to it on repeat, because it's just that good, and, like, it's a song where, yeah. like, you listen to it, you just can't help but, like, move, you know what I mean? Like, you can't sit still yeah. listening to that song. You oh. gotta move something. Like, you, you gotta a, dance. You need to see my dad listening to it. <laughs> um, and, like, I don't know, it's great. 
I will like, cause I'll, I'll like listen to that song and then I'll be like, I should probably listen to something else. And then the song starts up again. I'm like, well, I can listen to it one more time. And then I just like, <laughs> get stuck. I like seeing the like, video a lot. Seeing like some of the things that I missed about it, but you every know. time I see the video, I feel like I l- pick up something new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. I love the costume design in this movie, by the way. All the costumes were great, especially Lando and Kira's, just because they were so, like, I don't know, like, fancy, I guess. Like, colorful and fun. Come on, what about Chewbacca? Chewbacca had the best costume. He had the, like, <laughs> bandolier thing with the extra mm-hmm. thing. You know? He was getting fancy in this movie. So fancy, with goggles. I think Chewbacca should wear a tie. No. Nothing nothing else, just a tie. Maybe maybe they steal a tie from Lando when they get the ship. Yeah. I hope Lando got to move all his capes out of the cape closet. My dad says that he's a hundred percent sure he did. I feel like if Han had tried to take off with with the capes, I feel like Lando literally would have just shot him on the spot. <laughs> Not by capes. <laughs> um I feel, I mean, he did lose capes for Rebels. What do you mean? He didn't have a cape in Rebels. Oh. He didn't have one. I guess he left it at home. Hmm. I mean, the Doralist ex- explanation for that is animation is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so we've yet to have a Watsonian explanation for him not having a cape in Rebels, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say... Oh, did you... So I didn't get it, or I didn't catch it, but, um... The... Han made a... The ghost reference. Yeah, the VCX, right? Yeah. Yeah, I caught that the first time. I I didn't. I... (laughs) Well, he just said, he was like, oh, my ship's a VCX. It's the best. Like, yeah, it is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... I'm trying to think. Uh, Solo is before Rebels, right? Yes. All right. So I don't... It wouldn't really work in the timeline, I guess. But would L3 and Chopper not be the most chaotic team up in the galaxy? Who? L3 and Chopper. Oh, no. Like, if they teamed up, that would just be utter chaos. And I don't don't think (laughs) it would really work timeline-wise, but I really want it to. (laughs) <laughs> that would be so much fun. Oh, L3 was great. I loved L3. She's a droid activist, which is like, what else could you ask for? We've never seen <laughs> anything like that, like, droid rights in canon Star Wars. Not that I'm aware of, at least. I'm behind on the comic, very behind on the comics, so. <laughs> if there's something there, then I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't read But anything. I've read... <laughs> I've read almost all the books, and I've obviously seen all the movies and animated series, so... I don't know. It kind of reminded me of... I know you don't Overwatch, but one of the 500 you plot lines... You don't, you don't Overwatch? Yeah, I know you don't Overwatch. That's a thing now. It's a verb. Um, yeah. <laughs> but one of the 500 storylines in that game is... 500 is probably... Only a slightly, only a slight exaggeration, honestly. Um, one of the plot line kind of things is that there's this whole, like, rise, because there's Omnics, which are pretty much, like, droids, robots, and they, like, fight for their rights, too. Mm. So, it kind of reminded me of that. I don't know. So you died. I died? Oh. Okay, should I say the thing again? What did you hear? Uh, they fight for their rights. Yeah, they fight for the rights, so it just, it reminded me of that. That's what I said. Okay. Okay. I liked your yeah. line when Landon's like, hey, do you want anything? Equal rights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good. Hmm. Lando just looks so, he's so tired. I loved when he was recording himself. Yeah, I know, everyone's dying, and Lando's just sitting there vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 
the greatest thing. I love Lando. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I knew Lando in real life, I'd want to punch him like Hera did. Just because yeah. he's just very, like, sure of himself. But, like, I also think that's really awesome. He's so great. Also, we didn't... We went past... But, like, there's, um, there's, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, Beckett, and apparently he killed Aura Singh. And I am sad, because I used to really like Aura Singh when I was little. And now she's just gone. I mean, we're, we could still see more of her, I guess, in something. In what? I don't know. They could make, like, a Force of the Destiny story on how she died. (laughs) They wouldn't do that. I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Lizzie. How dare you? I'm sorry. Hmm. Hmm. It's the push that... It was the fall that killed her. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And apparently Lando... I want to know what this Felucia thing Land is that Lando did for Crimson Dawn. Oh. Because you mentioned that. Yeah. I'm curious. It's another thing that they just name drop and just flows in the conversation, like I was saying earlier. Yeah. I guess I'm so used to them explaining it, so I thought they would. But they didn't. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, we'll maybe we'll never see. Know. I... That would Lando. be a good setting for the Take Away TT Lando movie, because it's very colorful. Very. Very. Him. Very Lando. Yeah. Maybe the Felucia thing was just Lando. Maybe he just, like, I don't know, bought them all a bunch of capes to help them look cool. <laughs> that was it. That's forgiven. He got them capes. All the capes. Custom made capes. Yeah. And he kept some for himself, of course. Yeah. Duh. What do you think about Kira? About Kira? Mm-hmm. I think. I don't know what box to put her in. She's not. <laughs> like. Because she's not really, like, a hero. Yeah. And she. But she's. Not really, like, a villain. Like, she didn't read as a villain to me. I mean, I guess she kind of is. Um, but she's also, like, she doesn't really fit into the anti-hero box. So she's just kind of, like, her own thing, which I think is pretty cool. I... I have mixed feelings about her. I like her as a character. I think she's very interesting, and there's a lot they could do with her in the future. Um, as a person, I also have mixed feelings. Like, I'm trying not to hate her, because, like, she let Han go in the end. But, also just left Han. And it makes me sad. At her very core, she is like Han, like, she has a good heart. But I think she had to do some tough things to survive. Well, yeah, because now she's like trapped. She's and now a survivor. She's, yeah, and now she's trapped. Yeah, with Maul. Yeah. Oh, I love. Oh, Sam Witwer, man. Oh goodness. It was, it was Ray Park's like face and body, though. Yeah, and Sam Witwer. Which is Sam cool because oh, Ray Park oh, is I... so awesome. Sam Witwer. Yeah, say what was voice. It was, that was beautiful. That was music, music so, to my ears. It was in the Clone Wars and Rebels. Maul's face is a little more like I guess like not gaunt, but like I don't know how else to describe. Like his cheekbones are more defined, but then Ray Park's yeah. face in the Maul makeup is like a little rounder looking. So that kind of mm-hmm. that did because I've seen the Clone Wars and Rebels Maul for so long. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, Maul exists in the real, in the um, live action movies. Right, I forgot. <laughs> she seems so much like a staple to the anima- animation to me now. Yeah, I like the 
Like, I saw the legs, and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are they really doing that? And it, and that was really cool. Excited. And it was, it absolutely acknowledges, like, no Easter eggs or anything. It fully acknowledges Clone Wars and Rebels, which is awesome. And I hope we'll open the door to them being more included, if that makes Perfect. sense. Yeah. Because, like, I, I do understand why they don't always, like, make them front and center in the live-action movies. Because, like, the reality is a lot of people who go to see Star Wars movies, they don't know about Clone Wars. They don't know about Rebels. Yeah. So, or they know of them, but they haven't seen them. So, mm-hmm. I do understand why they want to, they don't want to confuse people. Cause, you know, they'll be like... Anakin had a Padawan? There were more Jedi between, you know, Revenge of the Sith and New Hope? And, like, yeah. Yeah. I think I think they will... At least, I think Clone Wars will be acknowledged first, just because more people, I think, know of it and watched yeah. it, because it's older. Oh, it's not older. It's before Rebels. It's not old. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's there. It's it's not old. Um. Uh. But. I don't know. I think it'll. We're gonna see more stuff. I think. A couple people. That like I know. The ones that did see it were like. I heard like. Maul was in it. That doesn't make any sense. He died. I'm like. Well. <laughs> well. You're let in me tell for you. a history lesson my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that was weirdly said. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Maul, that was so cool. That was really cool. I think cool. the excitement for me, because it spoiled for me, was less about Maul himself and more about Clone Wars and Rebels are being acknowledged. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except now everyone's gonna be like, we should get a movie where Obi-Wan kills Maul. It's like, we had that one, man. But I I heard that some people wanted them to redo it. They wanted... Huh? I hope they don't do that, because then they're just telling the same story over and over again, and it's gonna be no, like... No, no. It's gonna well, be like, like Batman, where they have to retell his origin story every five years. No, they were saying that they should... That the, cl- uh, not Clone Wars, the Rebels, like, how they killed a moth in, like, three attack, like, three, um, strikes was lame, and that they should redo that whole thing and put it in an Obi-Wan movie. And I just think that that doesn't, like, the whole three strikes thing is because, you know, Samurais, and, like, it's so cool that both these two amazing lightsaber uh, oh god, I cannot words tonight. Uh, <laughs> these, you know, fighters are so good that, yeah, their fight is only three seconds long. And putting that in the movie, or redoing that, is just l- one lame. And I don't think Star Wars will do that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. They were just saying that Maul, uh, they wasted Maul and Rebels. And, eh. Well, they didn't. Um, yeah. That three, because the episode wasn't about, it's like, because we wanted Maul, neither of them were main characters of the Rebels, so it wouldn't make sense to give them a big, long fight. Yeah. Because neither, like, I mean, I guess they did that with Ahsoka and Vader, but, like, Ezra and Kanan were there, and were, like, semi-involved. Yeah. Where, in the... Uh, in Rebels, Chopper and Ezra had left already. Yes. So it was just Maul and Kanan. There was no one there to watch the battle. So they would have had to slow the whole episode down. I guess not slow. You know what I mean? It's like they'd have to mess yeah. up with the pacing of the episode to fit in this long duel. When the point was that Maul... We've already discussed this on the show, like, when this happened. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, I'm going to say it again anyway, because that was a while ago. <laughs> the point was that, like, Maul was just trying to just... He was, like, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results, like, that whole thing. 
and that's what mm-hmm. Maul was doing, but Obi-Wan knew that, already knew it was going to happen. I don't know. Yeah, the, well, the, he was uh, there when Qui-Gon was killed, yeah, so of course yeah. he's going to replay that in his head and learn from it. Yeah, so, like, like there's a point to the short battle, and it doesn't have to be a long battle for it to be cool. Right. I really enjoyed that short battle. Like, it caught me off guard. I was like, whoa, oh, oh, they're, they're done now. Yeah, you're like, but, <laughs> but, like, it was, I just found that so cool, and Obi-Wan just quickly dodges a few times, and bam, he's done. Well, it was cool. It was, like, so cool. it was set up, because, you know, they do the poses, and you're like, all right, this is going to be, like, what, three minutes? But... <laughs> yeah, and I love how, like, Obi-Wan transitions his poses, like, from old Obi-Wan to now new Obi-Wan, like, you know, because yeah. he's been training and all this stuff. So I thought that was cool, too. And, um... There was another thing I wanted to say, but I forgot. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. I just, I just don't think if there's going to be an Obi Wan movie, I don't think it should be. I don't think Maul, like Maul, could be in it. I guess I'm not sure how that would work out. He could but. be like somewhere far away. It could be two dual storylines with Maul and Kenobi. And they kind of, like, sense each other or whatever. Mm. But I don't think they could meet. That would contradict Rebels, I think. Right. They can't meet or, like... Because in... In, um... In Rebels, that's when he finds out that he's alive. Like, because he... Like, I guess, senses him. So he can't even really do that in there. Yeah. Um, because Solo is before Rebels. I mean... They could find a way to incorporate. If they honestly, if they pulled Dave Filoni in, they could get Maul and Obi Wan to be in the same movie without meeting. Because for what all six seasons of Clone Wars, plus there are going to be more, he managed to keep Anakin and Grievous apart because of one little line that Anakin said in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. So, they just gotta. Call Floney and be like, hey, help us keep these people apart but still together. He's like, I got this, fam. <laughs> got this. Do this all the time. <laughs> um, I think Floney is like, yeah. in between Rebels and Clone Wars, I think he's like the hardest job of any of the Star Wars writers. Because, <laughs> like, because the Rebels and Clone Wars have to fit more with the movies than the movies have to fit with them, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. He has to, like, like, oh, this one character said this one line, so now I have to do everything I can to keep these characters from meeting each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because one line that they added just because. Mm-hmm. Props to Filoni. <laughs> uh, I was going to say something. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think they're going to redo it. And, um... I was talking to a, a classmate in school, and they were saying that if they were to do an Obi-Wan movie, this is how he wants it. So that's <laughs> when he first said that, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he said um, that he has, like, apparently Qui-Gon is going to, he's going to feel Qui-Gon, and Qui-Gon's going to tell him, hey, there's stuff to do outside of Tatooine right now. You gotta leave the boy for a few days, you know, kind of go on that little adventure. Um, I think I guess. Like, you, um, yeah. You go. Okay. And I guess they could do that, but because he, um, Obi-Wan's still training and still has to go on his quest just like Yoda and Qui Gon did to be able to, you know, disappear, become. Yeah. Force Ghost. So, I, they could do something about that, but I'm still really confused on what they would have an Obi-Wan movie for. For. I mean, I think they could find a way to keep it on Tatooine. It could be, like, maybe Tuscans or something. He finds out that they're going to attack the Lars farm. He's like, crap, I gotta do something. Well, they kind of did that in the comics, though. 
Did they? I don't know about the comics. Oh, well, like in the comics, it's like, you know, Obi-Wan watching over Luke. And then uh, one time, I think Luke got, um, um, I think his his vehicle got kind of just broke down on him. And so these people went to attack him. Obi-Wan was there and like attacked him. And then, um, is his name Lars? His uncle. Right? Uncle My, Lars. Or no, Uncle yeah. Owen. Uncle Owen, Owen Lars. Yes. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> Um, so, but Uncle Owen doesn't want that. He's, he doesn't want Obi-Wan to keep, like, messing with Luke and trying to protect him because he's scared that the whole, like, Skywalker thing is gonna come to Luke because, you know, everything the Skywalkers do is just horrible. (laughs) Yeah. So, I don't They did... They kind of did that. They can do it again, I guess, but I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm sure they could find something for Obi-Wan movie. But we're talking about Solo, though. We got so off track. Oh, God. Um, Solo. Uh, so, Notes. Kira. Mom, Where are you? Kira. Um, I loved L3's droid rebellion. That was <laughs> incredible. Also, oh, and the- also, also, did you hear yeah, yeah. the guy said Mala? He said Mala, come on, and that was the Wookiee that Chewie pressed the foreheads. So, the holiday special is canon now. I I don't think it's canon. It's I canon. just think that character is canon. It's no, canon. no, it's canon in my heart. Mm, no. Also, my mom was not happy about how the Wookiees looked. Like. Well, they were uh, underfed. They were underfed I know. and starved and slaves. I know, but it's just Chewbacca, so glorious. Well, they were all, you know, sad. Yeah, I know. I know. They just need a shower, and then they'll be all fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> like you... Chewbacca and Gunji, best wookies. Yeah. Oh, man. I was going to say something, but I, just... <laughs> I don't know if I should say it now. Say it. Um... Uh, how do I word this without being vulgar? Oh, no. (laughs) Uh, I don't want... Oh, okay. Hold on. Do it. (laughs) Do you think, like, Chewie, like, his hand or, like, his paw or whatever, like, his fur could be used as a loofah for Han when they were in the shower? (laughs) <laughs> like did they help each other like hey you got a little dirt here I got you scrub I'm sorry uh, <laughs> I was I, trying so hard not to even think about it but you know this is why like, I shouldn't say things <laughs> I say things like that don't do that <laughs> oh goodness that's gonna be in my mind for a while hmm um, so L3 creates a distraction, and Lando, we talked about Lando having many capes. And his vlogs. <laughs> I'd watch Lando's vlogs. I want to see all of Lando's vlogs. Man, I loved da- Donald, da- oh god, I was gonna say Danald. Danald. Dan- <laughs> <laughs> it's like Daniel and Donald, Danald. <laughs> Danald. Uh, Donald Glover's, uh, face like, his expressions are just so amazing. So Lando. Yeah. And, like, his pauses in between sentences, like, when he was, like, vlogging, was just so good. And I loved it. I want a Lando YouTube channel. I would watch all of those videos. Well, you know what my mom said that I thought was interesting? She said that the Calrissian Chronicles, maybe they'll become like, a thing that we can watch, like, we can, like, it'll, like, you know, like, he'll say, like, he'll narrate the story of him doing things with L3. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. Like, it'll be called the Calrissian Chronicles. I'd watch that. That would be pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I was sad when L3 died. I cried. 
I didn't, but that's good. <laughs> I think I feel bad because the whole thing with droids like whenever a droid dies, I'm always like, "Oh, they're okay. We can always fix them up." So, and I feel bad for saying that, <laughs> cause I'm like, "No, but they still got hurt." <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I mean, I think there's a point where they're damaged beyond repair. But right. It's okay. L three is part of the Falcon now. Right, and that leads me to like, it was funny because even if Lando knew he was gonna win in the end of the movie. He still gambled his friend and his ship. I mean, I'm, I doubt he was, like, thinking of that. Because it's not like right. he can really talk to her in the ship. But she's still part of the ship. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good way. Because the Falcon, um, always, to me, felt like it had its own kind of personality. Like, the Falcon is a character. And yeah. Like, L3 a good way, like, incorporating the ship was a good way to have that, because she is the perfect p- personality for the Falcon, if it has one. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, according to my dad, he said back in the olden days of Star Wars, <laughs> when there was, like, the first EU books coming out, he said the reason that the Falcon was always breaking down and stuff was because there were two droids that were servicing it, and both of them hated each other. And would break down each other's systems. Ooh. And so now I'm thinking maybe it's a similar thing, but instead of the two droids, it's always breaking down because L3 is just so annoyed with Han. She wants Lando back. (laughs) I loved when, like, they put in the coaxium kind of in the... In the little uh, floor panels, yeah. Yeah, and they did that, and then it all of a sudden didn't work. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, like, uh, Lando and his reaction to that, and then, like, they're slowly going backwards. Honestly. And I just thought that was so funny. <laughs> Lando has, like, he's very, like, in some ways relatable in this movie, because every time yeah. someone, like, Han does something stupid, he's just like, oh, my God, which is, like, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be friends with Lando. He's so cool. <laughs> you can teach me how to play Sabacc. We were playing Sabacc before the movie. I had the game. Um, and I don't... None, no one in my family ever wanted to play it. And I'm bad at reading directions, so I know how to play. Until Caden from Rebel Chatter taught me. And we only play, got to play it get through one round. Because we were podcasting and stuff that there. But I won the Falcon on the first round. <laughs> So I think it did oh, something, nice. right? <laughs> that was partially because um, Caden misread his cards. He thought one was positive when it was actually negative. Because, <laughs> like, because... In, do you know the rules of Sabak? Nope. No. Okay. So it's kind of like poker, except you have to get to zero. And some okay. cards are positive and some are negative. And the closer you are to zero, you get to take the pot. And if it's a positive and negative of the same absolute value, then the positive takes it. And so we all, it was three of us playing. We all put our cards down. I forget what the one guy had, but Caden had like a six and a nine. And so it was like, he had like 15 and then I had three total, like the total number. And mm-hmm. he was like, okay, I win. And I was staring at him. I was like, what? <laughs> And he was like, well, he's like, look, this one. Oh, no, that's not negative. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> and I won the Falcon due to dumb luck and a misreading of cards. But dumb luck, I feel like, is how Han Solo gets a lot of stuff, so. Definitely. Yeah. All right. We're talking about um, Enfys, N- Enfys Nest. I love her. <laughs> I want an Enfys Nest movie. <laughs> No. She, the, the actress is signed on for three movies. So. Right. And so is. So is Han and Aaron Reich. I'm, Donald Glover, I imagine, probably is signed on for three, too. I hope he did. Solo is. I think we'll get some kind of sequel or something to Solo. Because Kira and Maul's storyline. Like, there has to be something there. They're not going to leave us at that. Right? 
Um, I don't know. I don't... I feel like they should? Because, I don't know, because this whole Han Solo movie was really, like, good, and it was... Um, hmm, trying to explain myself. Like, it was just really good, and it seems really good by itself, and it's super fresh, and, you know... And I feel like doing more movies about it would just kind of be too much. I don't know. I'd like to see where Kira's sto- where, what Kira's fate is. Right, but they could do that with books or... Well, yeah, I guess. Still just want doing that more Lando movies movie, about though. it. <laughs> kind of suffocating, huh? I still want that Lando movie, though. <laughs> I do want that, though. Maybe it is a Lando movie, and that's why they all signed up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, so, you know what I was thinking? So, the Moss Eisley job with Han that he went to at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. that's when he, like, drops the cargo, right? I think but so. this movie takes place before Rebels. So, how yeah. long has, he be on, has Han been on the run from Jabba the Hutt at the time of A New Hope? Probably a long, long time. But, like, he's been on the run for so long, and he's just chilling in a Tatooine, like, bar. <laughs> <laughs> when he's on the run from Java. <laughs> Han. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? He's trying to be an outlaw. He's not very good at it. He's amazing at it, shush. He's a horrible person. Yeah, he's a very bad person. That's why he helps everyone he meets. <laughs> well, it's for money. <laughs> he didn't get... Oh, he got... I guess he got the one coaxium thing from Enfys Nest. But yeah. Oh, I he love... He wasn't when... expecting her to give him that. I think he was. But, he anyways. Kind of, so... He seemed a little surprised. To me, mm. at least. Mm. Um, I loved in the end when like Lando's like chilling and he's with people and he's playing Sabacc <laughs> and then he sees Han and he's like and his face just like so angry <laughs> <laughs> to be and fair goes, like, it took Han like what in movie time like five minutes to completely destroy his beloved ship <laughs> I would get angry, too. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I love when Han goes up to him, all mad, and, like, trying to get Chewie to rip out his arms, and Lando's super scared, and, and then it ends up, you know, Han just hugs him, takes his card, and then... <laughs> Lando's like, I knew you weren't gonna do it. He's like, yeah, no, yeah, no you didn't. It's just cute. It's great. Um... Yeah, I think there's, yeah, the movie was amazing. And I feel like it's a movie, like, when it comes out, like, on DVD and stuff, I feel like it's a movie that I'm going to just watch on repeat more than I watch any of the other Star Wars movies. Because, like, all the yeah. other Star Wars movies, like, I love them, but they're so, like, like, if you're like, hey, you want to watch Revenge of the Sith? I'm like, okay, I just need, like, two days to prepare and then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, with Solo, I feel like I'm, like, I feel like watching Star Wars, I could just turn on Solo, and, like, it's, like, there's emotional parts, but there's nothing that I'm gonna be, like, I feel, I wanna feel sad, you know? Yeah. Like, if I'm in a good mood, I feel like Solo's a good Star Wars movie to watch. Just whenever you're doing something, it just seems, you know, just seems good. Um, what other, I don't, I think that's all I got from my notes. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else I got here. I think. Yeah. I think that the movie's really good. I was. <laughs> I. The more I saw of it, the more I got excited for it. But I think I still went in with pretty low expectations. Yeah. I, like, yeah. It. Um. That it very, very much pleasantly surprised me. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I'm trying to think of what else I have to say. Um, I want Kira's jacket. Her jacket looks cool. <laughs> Ashley needs to make one. Ashley Eckstein. Hmm. Yeah, um... Do you know what would be a fun feature in this hypothetical Lando movie that I'm making up? Hon <laughs> what? Hondo. Hondo? Hondo Naka. Meeting Lando Calrissian. Oh, oh goodness. Okay, so I thought you were mixing Lando and Han. I was like, wait. Yeah. Wait. Ugh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hondo. Han Hondo would be great. It's like the best people well, in cause, one thing. Because Ezra told Hondo that he's Lando, right? Yeah. So he meets the real Lando. Because, like, they can fit that so that that, like, Hondo would be like, I met someone who said they were you. <laughs> Lando's like, of Are you course. sure? And Lando's like, Are Of course, sure? everyone wants to be me. <laughs> um, I think that's all I gotta say for this. I'm trying to think of other things. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of. Alright. So, and now I'm really thinking about this Lando movie. I'd like him to reference, <laughs> I'd like him to reference Chopper. And, ha and getting punched by Hera. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Like someone hits him, he's like, I haven't been hit this hard since I met the captain of that VCX 100. <laughs> and not Han, because Han doesn't actually have one. Hmm. Alright. I don't have any more words now. I don't have any either. Alright, so you wanna sign off? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you do it. I do it? Okay. Um, so, thank you for listening to Star Wars Geek Girl. Uh, go see Solo. Yeah. I was Lizzie.